Hey, good Saturday morning, everyone. Michael Clark here with BAM Weather with your latest uh, medium to long range forecast update. Got some interesting things going on in the pattern. I thought, let's put out a Saturday morning video and uh, get you all a, kind of a, abreast of what's coming here as we go over the next few weeks. So let's take a look here at latest uh, radar this morning. This is our um, clarity platform uh, that uh, built by BAM Weather that's going to be coming out here soon. Such an amazing platform. Something that we've been dealing with quite often lately, though, is fog. I want to kind of show you where all the fog is this morning. It's everywhere. I mean, there's fog all over the place. Uh, some dense fog, too, across the Ohio Valley and up across the northern plains. When we look here at rainfall just over the last three days. There hasn't been a ton of it, but places that really needed some of it here across Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio got some rain. Locally here, some folks got up to around an inch of rain. Some good rains there across portions of Minnesota as well. Overall, hasn't been a ton of rain in the east, and there really isn't going to, there's no major rainfall in the forecast in the areas that have ongoing drought development here in the Ohio Valley and the Midwest. The driver for all of this, this, this warmth lately and the lack of rainfall is the negative angular momentum or the global wind oscillation, if you will. Um, we've had a, a consistently negative AAM, which, which really means a, a faster global wind. It's more of a, of a product of uh, 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 La Nina. It's more, of a, it's more of the outcome of what typically would happen in a La Nina. I say faster or slower global wind. Sometimes I forget the difference between the two, but it doesn't matter. You don't even know what it means. I'm just trying to explain to you what it means. Uh, irregardless, this is a very La Nina-like atmosphere right now still, even though we're kind of trending towards a potential development of a, of a, a strong El Nino. Okay, Looking in the days ahead, we've had multiple instances, multiple failed attempts of taking the angular momentum positive. Um, even in the short term, the model still just really struggles. Uh, to the data struggles with the AAM forecast. Member one and two, most likely the, the better outcomes here is we head deeper into October. All right, these are hovering around neutral. I'm not seeing major positive angular momentum indications just yet, which tells me I'm not seeing um, significant major pattern changes just yet. Just yet. Now, there's some potential for things to change late October. We'll get into that here in just a moment. This is a look at the upper air pattern because we do have a huge cold front coming. This is where we are right now, big ridge, area of high pressure. And it's literally an omega block style pattern, and that's because it, it resembles the, the Greek uh, alphabet omega letter. Here you can see kind of going across uh, the trough in the west, ridge in the Great Lakes, trough out into the Atlantic. All right, and that's why it's warm and dry in the middle. Okay, it's a product of a split flow. La Nina. I mean, it's just, we haven't gotten into this El Nino-like pattern yet. Well, the big front's going to come late next week. Friday starts to work down, Saturday, Sunday. Um, some data, the data differs dramatically in the intensity of the cold that comes down with it. I would certainly be on the lookout for a major early frost next weekend across the large majority of the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and the Great Lakes, interior northeast. It's a big cold front. Models are going to struggle with temperature specifics out to that far. This is a look here at low temperatures, all right? Check out the European model, many areas into the upper 30s, all right? Check out the GFS model, not nearly as cold with areas into the low 40s. And then you got our good old trusty friend here, the Canadian weather model that puts everybody below freezing. <laughs> uh, it's a major strong cold front with many people in the 20s next weekend. Um, I don't think any of these solutions are correct, but I think the Canadian is showing us the potential potency of the cold front. Um, we've been talking about risks for an early frost for, for a long time, uh, for months, in our forecast products, our analog packages. So I would not be shocked if the forecast trends pretty much uh, a solid several degrees colder next week and then we are dealing with frost watches or frost advisories or whatever they want to call them nowadays. Okay, So big cold shot is coming. Uh, rainfall with the front, well, it's going to be rather lackluster, not a huge rainfall maker unless you're down across Texas, this here, this, this, this pattern firing up and getting very wet, uh, this is a, a, an indication of an El Nino in October, all right? The subtropical jet starts to fire up, and I've talked for a while now about erasing the, the very, very uh, strong, uh, intense, severe drought down into the deep south as we get into October. I do believe that's going to continue to start to surface 
slowly but surely, if you will. Temperatures the next five days are going to run dramatically above normal. This is a classic negative angular momentum uh, correlation or outcome. This is a big warm east cold west signal, and that is very common in, uh, in strong negative uh, AAM Octobers. Okay, so until we can see that big flip in that AAM, we're going to continue to see a forecast like this want to nudge and kind of re reappear. And, and it is trying to reappear after the cold shot next weekend, by the way. Okay, because you look at the 6 to 10, here comes the cold. So late week next weekend, it will feel much different than it feels right now, especially across the central and portions of the deep south uh, United States. Overnight weather data trends. Okay, I'm going to move my video just right here. 1 to 5, 6 to 10, 11 to 15. This is the trend versus the previous run. Okay. And note the colder trend across Canada. That's not actually a colder signal for the U.S. That's a, that's a signal of perhaps the blocking is, uh, is going to retreat a little bit quicker. Uh, the cold shot may not hang around as long. Precipitation trends. Well, the one thing that I, I like what I'm seeing because it's been in the research for a long time is the increased precipitation signals, 1 to 5, 6 to 10 for the American and the European uh, so this, these maps show us trends. What's the forecast trending towards? Well, it's trending wetter, uh, but it's not trending wetter across the Great Lakes. In fact, it's trending drier with really negligible changes here. Okay, so what does it look like for week two? Well, this is the week two forecast. This takes us out to the 13th of October. It's basically like the, the 7th through the 13th or so. Below normal in the east, warmer to the west and northwest. That's the byproduct of this cold front. A, a, a trough area of low pressure has sweeped through uh, the western Pacific Ocean over there near Japan and East Asia. A lot of times that can correlate to a nice cold front for us here, which we've seen. Um, what happens after this? Well, that's the key. That's what we got. That's what we got to find out, right? Uh, week two precip bone dry. It's not going to be wet. It's not a big. It's not a. It's not a week for looking for rainfall. In fact, it's probably a great week for uh, continued field work and harvest going on. A cooler harvest, um, but a dry one right now. There's really no question about it. Um, indications are we thought we'd be a lot wetter by this time frame, but uh, boy, I tell you, it's it's not really looking that way yeah, just yet. So we look at the EPS, the the ensemble, the European model, and again, you're going to watch. I want you to watch East Asia here, the Korean islands. Watch cold front number one. That's going to bring us our our first cold shot here in about uh, seven days next weekend. There you go. Uh, watch East Asia again. Another front comes through right there, brings another shot around the 15th. That'll probably be a pretty big cold front as well. And then I want to direct your attention towards something that changes. I want you to look at the long range forecast and how the ridge backs up further into Central Asia and a trough develops over the east. Watch the North Pacific pattern as well. Watch how there was ridging here, and then we start to see the blues and the trough become more predominant out into the, the basically the back half of the forecast. The whole pattern in and of itself. I think after the 15th or so of October does try to change. And I think the change features a positive PNA, which is more ridging back in here and cooler signal in here. All right, eventually. And that's kind of kind of what our week three and four products is trying to suggest. All right, this is our latest uh, week three and four forecast Brett Waltz put out yesterday. And we're, 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 we're going to start to transition to this. Um, I think what may start to happen in, in, in the, the forecaster confidence here, as you can see, uh, is, is incredibly below normal. And that's because of just how, how volatile this pattern has been. I think these aboves are going to start to pull back further than north and west. And these belows are going to start to kind of develop in here. Okay, We do think we are colder than the 10-year normal, but we're not as cold as the 30-year normal in the week 3 to 4 time frame. Again, though, with precipitation, we're gonna we're gonna get it wet down here and across the coast. The subtropical jet firing up, but gosh, guys, I tell you where it's been very dry here across the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes. No big signals yet for any increased rainfall patterns coming in. All right, so that is certainly something that uh, I want to continue to point your attention to. You look at the precipitation forecast for October, the multiple runs of the CFS. Whew, that's a dry forecast for the month of October right now. Uh, looking at the model data. So um, that's an interesting uh, forecast. It's an interesting thought process because we should start to see that subtropical jet kick in 
and get some late season, uh, some some late autumn rains here. Um, it's yet to be seen. We'll get, we'll keep watching it, right? Uh, I do want to encourage you guys uh, follow us on YouTube, follow us on socials here. We're going to start kind of making these videos, these long range patterns, pattern analysis, a little bit more available to folks as our new platform is launching. Clarity. I'm really excited for that, and we're going to start directing a lot of what we do to uh, a lot of folks of what we do to Clarity, so they can just look at. Uh, just how cool this product really is, what all it has to offer. Uh, I can't wait to unveil it and roll it out here in the next couple of weeks. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.